All right, welcome everyone to our uh, very special Hanukkah webinar, uh, Sharing Light and Truth Together. Uh, my name is Adam Gabelli. I am the Deputy Director for um, ICJ Canada, the Canadian office. And uh, it is an honor definitely for me to be here uh, and to have some of these special guests uh, joining us from across Canada, uh, but as well uh, from uh, Israel. And uh, we'll be introducing them here in a very uh, uh, short moment. Um, but for all of you who are joining, I want to welcome you. If you're joining on Zoom, if you're joining on Facebook, uh, the, the live stream, or on the replay, you might be watching this later on this week as it is Hanukkah, and we'll be sharing uh, whether it be on um, YouTube or Facebook as well on the replay. And we thank you all for joining this very important webinar uh, of Christians and Jews coming together at this very special time, this festival of lights, this festival of Hanukkah and dedication. Uh, so for many of us, 2021 has been a very intense year, uh, but particularly for Israel and the Jewish community. With the war sparked by Hamas, uh, last May, the continued evils of terrorism, uh, even as, as recent as last week, the alarming rise of anti-Semitism, uh, particularly around the world, but today we're going to be even addressing it here in Canada. Uh, it's, it's very important that we continue to stand with uh, Israel, with our Jewish friends and neighbors, and the ICJ all the more is committed to standing with Israel and the Jewish diaspora as Christian Zionists and friends of Israel. Now at the International Christian Embassy, our heart has always been to bridge the gap between the church and the Jewish people, even though this is a relationship that has had um, a very tarnished past and a marred history. But for over 40 years, the ICG has stood by our scriptural mandate of Isaiah chapter 40, which declares, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, comfort, comfort my people. And we believe more than ever as believers in the God of the Bible, that we must hold true to that promise practically, politically, uh, through friendship, and spiritually through prayer. This is why as the Canadian office of the ICJ, we felt it necessary to have this webinar as it is a very special time, the, the festival of light, Hanukkah, and we were remembering light overcoming darkness, which I'm sure will be elaborated in a few moments. Uh, so before we begin, uh, I wanted to open this time in prayer. Now I'm just going to see if our special guest to pray has come on. Uh, I don't see them, so I'm going to open up in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet uh, with uh, our, our friends across Canada, representatives of ICJ, donors uh, to the organization, uh, Jewish friends from here in Canada, and of course in Israel. Lord, we know, God, that uh, you are the one who brought light into the world. In the beginning, you said, let there be light. And this is such a joyous time and a wonderful time of remembering light overcoming darkness, the great miracles of tyranny uh, being dispelled and uh, miracles happening uh, in that day. So Lord, would you just be with us and guide us in this time and thank you again for this opportunity. Amen and amen. Well, again, um, I'm going to, uh, again, thank you all for joining us if you just joined us and I'm going to be passing it off to our um, executive director of the Canadian branch. I'm very honored always to introduce Donna Hallbrook, who's been so faithful uh, for 20 years to, at the helm of the ICJ Canada. And she's going to say a few words and of course, introduce our first speaker today, Donna Hallbrook, joining us from Toronto. Go ahead, Donna. Thank you, Adam. Uh, nice to have you on the West Coast there guiding us. Uh, and it's so wonderful to have everyone together. And I, I, we, we enjoyed having Shmuel. He's not only just an ICJ friend and colleague uh, of the ministry, but a friend of our personal families. And uh, Shmuel and his son, Yoav, were in our home office just on November the 11th. 
for Remembrance Day. And uh, we did a, a nice CJ Canada webinar then and filming segments for our Inside Israel TV program, which airs four times a week on Daystar. Um, Shamuel is a uh, ordained tra uh, Torah scribe and no, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back a little bit because we've known, I've known uh, Shmuel for uh, probably two decades, close to maybe. Uh, he was born and raised in Toronto and worked here as a professional gerontologist in late 1990. He voluntarily joined the IDF, the Israel Defense Force, and served during the, the Gulf War. He made Alia, that is, he moved to Israel in 1993. Shmuel is an ordained Torah scribe and is passionate about teaching the wisdom of the sacred letters of the Hebrew alphabet, as well as a, a rabbinic laws pertaining to writing sacred scrolls. A career in senior positions at notable organizations in Israel spanning a quarter century has brought him to work closely with an array of leaders in politics, education, security, and faith. Shemil joined Operation Life Shield at the time of its founding in 2006. As executive director of Operation Life Shield, hundreds of accessible bomb shelters have been deployed under his watch and thousands of Israeli lives protected. He is regarded as an expert in the field of passionate defense and humanitarian NGO relief efforts. Shmuel and his wife, Leah, who we also love and adore, is a licensed Israeli tour guide. They have five children and one granddaughter, a son-in-law, and live in Afrat, Israel, where we have visited them on a few occasions. So, um, Shamuel, it is delightful at this time of Hanukkah to have you with us, and um, we're looking forward to what you would like to share with us today. Thank you so much, Donna. Thank you, everybody. Shalom. It's uh, it's good to be here, and um, and it is it is Hanukkah, and I and I really whoever came up with the title for this webinar together sharing light and truth, I think really captured the idea, the deep idea of what Hanukkah is all about. Um, because we could really get lost in, you know, all the, all the tinsel and all the commercialism. You know, we could really uh, lose sight of what the uh, festival is all about, what it is that we're actually remembering. And I, I think that the, con the idea of light and truth um, really, really summarizes it. And I think it also will provide us with the segue or the continuum to our conversation, and especially as it pertains to uh, my, uh, my, my co-speaker, uh, um, Richard, as we learn about what's happening in Canada and also around the world in terms of the darkness, the darkness of anti-Semitism. So there is, it is connected. So why don't we go back and take a look at first where all this darkness is coming from so I'm not going to really touch on anything on history because there's lots of information out there on the good old internet and, uh, and, and especially ICEJ has amazing resources um, uh, in the international ICEJ pages. Uh, Susan Michael out of the U.S. branch writes a blog and has a program called uh, walk through the Bible that also has really important information. So if you want to get the historical background to Hanukkah itself and that whole historical period, you know there's places where to go. I really want to take a look at the meaningfulness, the deeper, deeper ideas behind Hanukkah itself. Well, for starters, it takes place and this is the only piece of history I'm really going to get into, it takes place in a very special time. It takes place in those years, okay, where the, uh, where the, where Tanakh, 
or as some will call the Old Testament, kind of comes to an end. And then really the, uh, the events of around 2,000 years ago pick up. And it's this period of time when a lot of uh, empire building and, st uh, and, and, and strategic placement of who's in charge and which influences are happening globally is happening. And so our, Taurus, our, our story for Hanukkah places itself at approximately, and I don't want to, yeah, approximately in the second century BCE or BC, some may call it, approximately the year 100, 165 BC or approximately uh, 2200 years ago, thereabouts. And at this particular point in time, the Greek empire is really, they're really the big show. It's after Alexander the Great has died, and now it's split up into different, um, into different uh, uh, authorities. And one of them in particular, which is, uh, we call it in Hebrew, right, Antiochus, which is based out of what is now Syria, is taking over and influencing what is today Israel. And he's looking at the Jewish people, and he is not pleased with what he sees. He's a world power that has conquered the entire world, usually not with great force, but with the beauty, the intellect of the uh, Greek philosophy, of sport, of politics, of mathematics, of all the really great things that, in fact, in Western culture and society today, is the building blocks of what we see even in Canada, United States, and in Europe. He looks at Israel and he has a problem because in every other society, he can turn to them and he can say, no problem, keep your gods. Lovely, you got a God for this, you got a God for that, you got gods for these things, lovely. We're just gonna insert all of the gods, right? That we've collected throughout the Greek empire, about the world empire, and Everyone will kind of like, right, this whole rainbow, this whole pluralism, it's all, and the Jewish people are going, uh, actually, um, that's not going to work. We got one God, and we've got this, uh, we, you know, we've got this temple, and this is where we, this is where we do it, and they're not happy with this, and what happens is two things, and that is, is that a a, a edicts are placed, laws, legislation, votes, like UN votes, right? Votes, our, 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 uh, our, uh, our laws are, are, are uh, initiated, which basically bar Jewish, the Jewish people from following our faith. We can't do the biggies. We can't study Torah. We can't uh, do Brit Bilah, which is circumcision, which is really the, the covenant, the the covenant going back all the way to Abraham with between God and the Jewish people. Okay, we, we, we can't do, we can't keep kosher, all the things which, which are the institutions, right, of, of the Jewish people are outlawed. So number one, we got that problem. But we have another problem, and this is the problem that sometimes we don't focus on. We have an internal problem. We have a civil war. You see, a lot of uh, the Jewish people kind of like, figured, you know what, let's just go with the big empire. Let's just go with what this, uh, the Greek influence is all about. It's beautiful. It's nice. It's attractive. And more importantly, everyone's doing it. Hey, everyone's doing it. So why shouldn't we? So we basically had two enemies, if you will. We had the enemy uh, with, on the outside, in other words, this foreign, this foreign government, and which was really global influence and we had the enemy on the inside we had what was called uh, hellenized right hellenized jews who were saying you know what uh, i think we i think we've we're done with judaism we're done with this you know what I, I have no problem with going to the same temple and having all the gods there doesn't bother me at all and that's where our war was great darkness great darkness the victory that we celebrate is on again on two fronts. We talk about the fact that a small little right rebel army of Jews, led by what's the Maccabees, uh, beat the greatest empire, the greatest army in the world, 
okay, and actually created a sovereign Jewish state here in Israel. And the second battle that we won was the, the war against assimilation, the war against the Hellenized Jews, who basically from the inside were prepared to basically flush Judaism down the toilet, basically, and say goodbye to it. And so we won on those two fronts. We talk about darkness, and we talk about lighting that darkness. And, you know, lighting darkness, you don't need a spotlight. You don't need a lot of flash. Sometimes you just need a piercing little bit of light to pierce through that darkness that sends a message. And that, that light can be a light. It can be a voice. It could be an, a, a comment in the newspaper. It can be these days with social media, we have all sorts of platforms, tweets and Instagrams and Facebook messages that says to people who are against Israel and the Jewish people, you know what? You're wrong. You know what? There's another opinion. And these little sparks, these little pieces of light is what we're celebrating. And it makes it so manageable, does it? If you think about it, if we had a festival that said, uh, what we need to do is you need to light up as many lights as possible, make as big as noise as possible. Otherwise, forget it. But that's not what we're doing. What we do is we take a candle, as we're doing every night, and I'll light for us right now, and then we'll close it out for any questions. But basically, with your permission, I'll light the Hanukkah candles. And <laughs> All right. And basically, with these lights, these little piercing lights, we want to kind of knock out that darkness, and by doing that, bring, bring truth into the world. We say the blessings, and the blessings are very, very powerful. There's two blessings that we say, and I think these blessings are so important to know. We say the following. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedeshanu b'mitzvotah b'tzivanu Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, right? That is sanctified the commandment of lighting this Hanukkah candle. This little Hanukkah candle. Little. A little voice. A little comment. A little tweet. The second blessing that we say, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, sha'asanisim lavoteinu bayanim hahem basman hazeh. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the world, ready for this, that does, that does miracles, that, that did miracles for our forefathers and foremothers, okay, in their days at this time. What does that mean, dear friends? It means the miracles that happened then are the same miracles that are happening today. We light the candles, little lights, and with these lights, because we're lighting uh, four, four candles, it's the fourth light of Hanukkah. And with these little lights, we make a statement in the darkness of the world. When everybody is against us, when everybody is trying to destroy us, when everybody is trying to assimilate us, we say, you want to know something? Our little voices can do something. Dear friends, especially a, a, a message to my Christian brothers and sisters. And that is Hanukkah that happened 2,200 years ago. You want to know something? It wasn't just a Jewish holiday. It wasn't just a Jewish holiday. Think about it. If 2,200 years ago, 2,200 years ago, just about, if the Jewish nation had ended, and if world influence had swept over Israel, and if all the leadership and everybody had decided to just go along with what the popular culture was, okay? That would have been the end of our faith in the one God. That would have been the end. And all the events that took place after that that we know of simply wouldn't have taken place, none whatsoever. And so this is really a festival celebrating light, celebrating our one God, and celebrating literally what we've achieved to this day today. So I'll leave it there for now, if that's okay. I just want to add one last thing, sorry. And that is the Sivivon. This is a Sivivon, a dreidel, 
Nes Gadol Haya Po, a great miracle took place here. It's a spinning game. They say it's a children's game. It's not a children's game. This is a declaration that says, you're going to try and wipe us out. You know what we're going to do? We're going to keep on learning. We're going to keep on studying. We're going to keep on worshiping. We're going to keep on fellowshipping. This little dreidel, this little game, this child's toy, is a statement of our protest against sweeping world opinions against us. Happy Hanukkah. Wow. Well, Hanukkah Sameach, Rabbi Shmuel, and an amazing, amazing encapsulation of the spirit behind this uh, and why it is important, even, even for Christians, to recognize Hanukkah. You know, I, I, we're not asking as an ICJ for all Christian homes to get a Hanukkah, which is an, a nine-candled menorah in their homes, but to recognize, truly, uh, if it wasn't for Hanukkah, there's that saying, there would be no Christmas. And that's actually truth. That's just not cliche. Uh, and so, wow, we so, so appreciate that. We're going to take a couple moments for questions before we have our next um, speaker, our next guest, uh, join us uh, and, and bring some updates and some truth. Um, so please, if you are uh, having any questions, you can post them in the chat. I will also take a moment to take a look at Facebook as well. Um, but before we go to questions, Rabbi Shmuel, uh, could you, in a minute or two, kind of um, share of the um, this important relationship that your organization, which is doing the the, the, the job of saving lives, um, has a relationship with the Christian community and the ICJ, particularly internationally? Um, because again, I, I don't know if many people are aware of how crucial that relationship is, even to this day, of standing against darkness and uh, that practical life-saving work. So if you could, just in a nutshell, and please, if you have questions, post in the chat. Okay, I can do it in like a minute. And it's very, very simple. Our enemies, right? We talk about Hamas and we talk about Hezbollah. And by the way, I want to be very clear. Our enemies are not the Palestinian people. Our enemies are not the Arab people. Our Arabs are not the Muslim people. They are brothers and sisters. But they are being dictated to by horrible, terrible, tyrann tyrannical mobsters. Okay, and we all need to, that's evil. We need to really understand that. We also need to understand that when rockets are fired from Gaza and from Lebanon into Israel, these aren't only enemies of Israel, Adam. These people are enemies of God. They're enemies of God. These are people who are living in true darkness and want to bring darkness to the world. And so what are we doing? We're protecting, we're putting the protection over the children, over the elderly, over the disabled, okay, over families and giving them solid concrete shelters for them to go to so that on a day-to-day -day basis, they have peace of mind. By the way, that stress level as a result of the shelters drops drastically on a day-to-day -day basis. And when rockets do fall, like we did ha have this past May, where 4,300 rockets fell in a 10-day period, literally saved many, 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 many lives. This is our partnership with ICEJ, so that every time, right, these kids are coming out of a bomb shelter, and they look at the bomb shelter and go, so who, how, who, how did, where did this come from? It says, International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. I want to say something on record. This is a sanctification of God's name. This is a sanctification of God's name. When people see that there are Christians around the world and, 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 and Canadians who are protecting them and saving their lives, when Israelis are seeing this, when, when, when Thai workers foreign workers are seeing this, when Christian pilgrims are seeing this, when Muslim Arabs are seeing this. Okay, this is a sanctification of God's name. This is the partnership that we've had for a decade and a half, providing solid protection, really, against this darkness. Wow. And I know right at the end, I, we're going to be asking our director of communications, Jude, to give a little bit of an update. We have some really exciting news about that, even uh, in this past few months and days of how we were continuing that work and that partnership. A couple questions coming through here for you, uh, Rabbi Bowman. Um, first one here is from Dr. Wes Mack, uh, someone who you, you met recently. He asks, um, where did the concept of the servant candle come from, that ninth candle, if you have any idea, or the shamash? Uh, what's that all about? That's, the, that's our first question. Yeah, so, the, so 
the eight candles, we light eight candles. Those eight candles are to be looked at. That's it. You're just supposed to look at them. The mitzvah, as we just said, is lahadlik ner, to kindle, right, to light those candles. That's it. It doesn't say read a book by it. It doesn't say do any work by it. Nothing. It doesn't even say to light up your, uh, your room with it. Therefore, that ninth candle, the servant candle or the shamash, is the candle that is literally providing you with light. Um, it's basically a functionary um, candle. It's a functionary light that is basically giving you the light that you can use for all sorts of other things because those other eight candles are only supposed to be looked at and enjoyed and not to be used in a, um, in a, in a functional way. Hope that makes sense. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and that's maybe if you're wondering, I, I know when I do have my Hanukkah at home, they're not long lights, you know, it's only usually the ones that I have here, it's about an hour, two hours maybe. And uh, because your the mitzvah is to enjoy and look at them and to see how they light, how they shine. Um, it reminds me of the, the verse uh, that was, I believe it was uh, Shalom HaMelech wrote in the Proverbs that the uh, candle of, uh, of God is the soul of man, right? And so the candle also reminds us of, of our lives before God. That's very interesting. Um, and I have another question here. Um, how is the timing of the Hanukkah celebration determined on the Hebrew calendar? For example, next year, 5783 is celebrated from December 18th to the 16th. Uh, it, how, how do we determine Hanukkah, the timing of it, Rabbi Shmuel? Right, so Hanukkah is always, um, is always going to be on Kuf, I'm just looking at the Hebrew calendar, yeah, is going to be on always Kuf Hey. Kaf hey of Kislev. It always starts, it's always on that. It's the, the Hebrew calendar, it's always on the same day of the Hebrew calendar. And that's basically going to be the 25th, 25th of yeah. the Hebrew month of Kislev. That's always the same. What changes really is the Gregorian calendar, the English calendar, which is why we wind up with it being in December next year. This year it was in November, because this year everything's a little earlier, then it gets adjusted, because we're a lunar calendar with a solar adjustment, as opposed to the Gregorian calendar, which is purely a solar calendar. So it's always going to be on the 25th of the Hebrew month of Kislev, always. That's right. And so... You know, the, the Jewish people, that calendar is a lot older than the Gregorian calendar. And so they're wondering, why does Christmas move every year? <laughs> but I, I saw that joke not too long ago. It was really funny. Well, thank you so much, Rabbi Bowman. I don't see any other questions at the moment, but a reminder, um, Rabbi Bowman, if, if you have the time and you're able to stick around, there might be more questions that might come up in the end. Um, the, and stay tuned as well, everyone, at the end to hear some amazing uh, news right from Canada of what has happened uh, with OLS, OLS recently. Um, I'm gonna pass it back to Donna. Donna, I'll pull you up here in just a moment. Here we go. And Donna uh, is gonna introduce our next speaker who we're very honored to have joined with us as well. Go ahead, Donna. Well, it's my great pleasure to introduce to everyone, Richard Marceau. He's a lawyer, politician, writer, and executive. He was born in Quebec City. And as a lawyer, a member of the Barreau de Quebec and of the Law Society of Ontario, Richard is a graduate from Quebec City's Université Laval Law School, the University of Western Ontario Law School, and Francis École Nationale d'Administration. Elected to the House of Commons in 18... I'm sorry! I put you too young, right? At 1997 and twice re-elected, Richard now works as CJS, that's the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, Vice President of External Affairs and General Counsel. He had co-chaired the Canada-Israel Interparliamentary Friendship Group and sponsored a bill establishing our National Holocaust Remembrance Day. I remember that day. We were in Ottawa when that was announced. He is the author of Jouef, Un Histoire Québécois and its English language adaptation, A Quebec Jew from Bloc 
Quebecois MP to Jewish Activist, which was published at Les Editions de Marais, for which he received the Helen and Stan Vine Canadian Jewish Book Award in 2012. With Montreal-based Rabbi Adam Shire, he compiled and edited the Canadian Haggadah Canadian, published in 2015, which received positive acclaim in Canada and worldwide. Richard was awarded the Canadian Jewish Congress Saul Hayes Human Rights Award in 2004, and the Republic of Poland's Silver Cross of Merit in 2013. Uh, please welcome our next guest, Richard Marceau. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, uh, thank you, Donna, for for having me. It's an honor to be invited to um, to this talk. Um, I have to say, I'm I, I'm a bit jealous of of Rabbi Bauman. Uh, he gets to speak about the light about Hanukkah, which is one of my favorite uh, holidays. Uh, and I was asked to speak about something that's that's darker, that is um, anti-Semitism in in Canada. Um, I think it's appropriate, however, to, to talk about, about this as we are uh, in a period where Jews around the world uh, light candles um, in their houses, in their, uh, in their uh, businesses. Sometimes there, there will be tonight a, um, a uh, Hanukkah lighting uh, virtual by members of parliament and many members of parliament and members of the public are, are, are also invited. So, uh, you know, as we talk about this darkness that is anti-Semitism, this Jew hatred, um, to be able to also know that there's light in this world, uh, I think makes it, makes it better. Um, according to Erwin Kotler, who is Canada's special envoy uh, in the fight against anti-Semitism, we saw in 2021, um, we saw that anti-Semitism reached its highest level since the Second World War. Um, that's quite striking. Um, and and it, it should give all of us pause, uh, not only Jews, not only friends of Jews, like people on this, on this program are, but also Canadian society in general. So where does this anti-Semitism come from? The... Um, the conventional wisdom is that it comes from three main sources. Uh, the first one is the usual far right, uh, neo Nazi white supremacist kind of anti Semitism that we saw, for example, walk in the streets of Charlottesville. Jews will not replace us uh, with the wiki uh, lamps uh, burning. Um, this is one kind of, of, uh, of anti Semitism that exists, that's still alive, that's still. Um, that's still present here in Canada. The second uh, form of anti-Semitism is anti the anti-Semitism on the far left, is the anti-Semitism that, for example, would try to, under the cover of, uh, of universal values, would try to uh, stop people at UFT uh, Scarborough campus from having uh, kosher food unless the kosher um, the, the kosher makers, the, the kitchen, is uh, supporting of the BDS movement, the boycott, divestment, sanction movement against the only Jewish state. Um, so people on the far left uh, are also conveyor of anti-Semitism. And the third one is uh, from radical Islamist circles. Again, not Muslim circles, but a subset uh, of it, the radical Islamist um, the radical Islamist circles. And this is something that we see also, not only in Canada, but around the world. Um, between 2012 and 2018, the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights did a study and it involved 16,395 people. And they found that, uh, that anti-Semitism was across the spectrum. Um, when, when, people, uh, when people were asked, um, when you, when you uh, experience uh, anti-Semitism, um, what was the source of anti-Semitism? Um, it was 30% said it was someone with an extremist Muslim view. Someone with a left-wing political view was 21%. 
and someone from an extreme right-wing view was 13%. So those are the three main uh, sources. However, however, um, I was have, so happened to have coffee with uh, Professor Cutler earlier uh, earlier today, and he was um, telling me, yeah, that that's still true. But the, the the main issue that I see now is the mainstreamization of anti-Semitism. It used to be in those outlying circles, the far right, the far left, and and and, and the Islamic circles. Now it's becoming mainstream, and that is much more worrisome than uh, than it was in in past years. Um, at the risk of sounding maybe harsh, um, the trying to uh, make a partisan issue of anti-Semitism is the wrong way to go. And it's actually making people who do that are more part of the problem than of the solution. That is that if you're on the left side of this polar, political spectrum, weaponizing anti-Semitism to accuse the right wing of being carriers of anti-Semitism while closing your, your eyes, on, on your own side, a uh, version of anti-Semitism is not, it's not the right way to proceed. And the same thing from the other side. That is that if, you're, if you want to fight, if you want to combat anti-Semitism, you have to call it wherever you find wherever you find it, whether it's on your side politically or on the other side politically, because only that way can we make sure that it is, uh, it is combated properly. Um, but here we, we talk about numbers and the left wing and the right wing. And the, but let me, let me give you a, a few examples that, that, uh, of anti-Semitism just in the last few months. And, and you'll see how and why the Jewish community in Canada is very, very worried about the situation now. On a Sunday in last May uh, in Montreal, there was a small uh, meeting of Jews uh, uh, in, in a park in Montreal. It was around the time of the latest conflict between the terrorist group Hamas and the state of Israel. Uh, Jews were uh, pursued in the streets of Montreal. They were called dirty Jews. Uh, rocks were thrown at them. Bottles were thrown at them um, simply because they were peacefully in a park saying that they were in support of the state of Israel. Um, in Montreal, in the uh, very Jewish uh, area of Côte Saint-Luc, uh, during the holiday of Shavuot, uh, marking the, the giving of the Torah, um, there were cars driving in the streets and yelling insults of, at people who were obviously Jewish because they were either going to synagogue or coming back from synagogue after, after services. Um, there was a, in, a demo, in an anti-Israel demonstration again in Montreal, uh, people came, came in armed with axes, with knives, and with bottles filled with a liquid that looked like, uh, that looked like Molotov cocktail. It was to the point that the Montreal Jewish, uh, sorry, the Montreal police went as far as saying that it was seeing a hate wave against the Jewish community. But that's not only Montreal. In Toronto, uh, we saw a five-fold spike in anti-Semitic anti incidents in May compared to the previous months. Toronto men and women who were obviously Jewish were assaulted and harassed. For example, a rabbi was walking his daughter to sick kids hospital when someone on the street heard Nazi-like uh, comments at the family, and they were going to sick kids. Uh, in Edmonton, a caravan drove through a Jewish neighborhood asking where the Jews live to try to intimidate the Jewish community there. In Moncton, a man by the name of Erwin Lampert, um, who wears a kippah thus, identifiable as a Jew, uh, saw a complete stranger walk up to him and starting to uh, yell insults at him, uh, anti-Semitic insults, simply because he was wearing a kippah. And Mr. Lampert said that now in Moncton, some people are worried about simply wearing uh, Magen David, a Star David around, around their necks. Uh, in Vancouver, um, there's, a, there's a woman who owns a restaurant. Um, she's an Israeli, she's an Israeli, but it's been in Canada for 30 years. Um, and because she was, uh, because she's Israeli born, was subjected to threats. She was, she was, uh, uh, she was threatened with uh, being, pardon me, but I have to say this, uh, that they will, that people would grind her, rape her, and kill her. 
in Vancouver. And I could go on and on and on. I'll give you two, uh, two other quick examples. Uh, a friend of mine who um, served as Canada's ambassador to one of the Nordic states in Europe called me um, saying, I need your help. My uh, niece who's in primary school was told by a classmate, move, I don't want to sit beside a Jew. In primary school. Another friend of mine um, called me, her daughter just finished uh, veterinarian school. Uh, and she, of course, like a lot of people uh, during the pandemic spends a lot of time on online. And um, she was crying at night, seeing all the horrible stuff, uh, all the horrible anti-Semitic stuff online. And her mother called me, said, how can I help my daughter? She's seeing all this stuff and it's obviously affecting her. So it was to the point that CJA, the organization I work for, had to uh, put together seminars and training sessions for parents to help their own children deal with the hate, the anti-Semitism that they were seeing online. And again, that's here in Canada. Um, I can give you a lot of other examples and, 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 and it, it's very, um, very um, worrisome for, for Jews in Canada. Don't get me wrong, while Canada is, by historical standards, a great country to be Jewish, we would be blind to think that anti-Semitism is gone, that anti-Semitism is not still today a lived experience of many people of the Jewish community. Statistics Canada has shown that year after year, the most targeted religious community in Canada in terms of hate crime, year after year, is the Jewish community in terms of number and in terms of percentage um, as well. And the threat and the impact of this is real. Many Jewish community organizations, such as Jewish community centers, have full-time security staff and infrastructure. Synagogues across the country routinely pay out of pocket uh, to hire paid duty uh, police officers during the high holidays. When I go to my own synagogue here in Ottawa during the high holidays, sometimes it feels like I'm going to board a flight because we have police officers and we go through metal detectors. So imagine when you're about to you know, enter a, a, a sanctuary at the the highlight of, of Jewish religious life, when you're, you know, it's the high holidays, the Yamin Noraim, the, 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 the days of awe, and you're supposed to have worked the previous month to put yourself in a particular spiritual and mental place, and you, you get to synagogue and you have to wait because you have people with wants to make sure that there's no weapons being, uh, being uh, brought in the, uh, in the synagogue. Um, so, what can be done? What can we as, as Canada uh, do? Um, so here's a few things that, that I, and I will, I will leave uh, and I will conclude with that. Uh, first of all, the question of education. We have to do better to educate our young people. Um, hate is, is taught, uh, hate comes from places, and only education can combat the hate. Two, uh, internationally, there's a, there's a well-used uh, and well-accepted definition of anti-Semitism uh, that was created by an international organization called the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, IRA, and it's been adopted by, uh, by the government of Canada, by the government of Quebec, the government of Ontario, the government of New Brunswick, and many cities across the country. And more institutions and more governments need to adopt it because it's a great yardstick to identify anti-Semitism. And here's interesting to know that many anti-Israel activists fearing for fearing being called out for what they are, being having a, 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 an anti-Israel obsession that veers into anti-Semitism are fighting tooth and nails against the adoption of the IRA definition of anti-Semitism. Another thing that can be done is to uh, is for the government to invest in security for different communities that are at risk, uh, including, of course, the Jewish community. Uh, there's a need to fight online hate. 
and here uh, I'm very happy to, to say that you know, we're seeing movement on this. The government has committed to moving on online hate. And not later that, that this week, we saw a, a study done by the Canadian Race Relation Foundation that shows that about three quarters of Canadians want action on online hate. Um, and Sija is at the head of a, of a coalition of different groups who are targeted by online hate, uh, asking governments to move on this. And the last thing is what can specifically Christians do? So um, I guess I would say here, Christians have, uh, what they can do is combat Jew hatred in Christian circles. Um, Christian circles are not immune from uh, Jew hatred. We see a worry, worrisome trend in the United Church of Canada, for example. We're hearing that for their general council next summer, there are uh, resolutions that are coming up the pipes that are focused on Israel, um, want to have BDS impose on Israel, want to adopt an alternative definition of anti-Semitism anti that would let uh, Israel obsessed, uh, anti-Israel obsessed uh, activists off the hook. Uh, because behind, uh, anti, behind, uh, behind the anti-Zionism, there's often uh, anti-Semitism that is there. And so I'm, I'm calling on you, Christian friends, to, you know, don't hesitate to call uh, to to uh, engage with the UCC. Uh, if you, there's a UCC in your community, a United Church in your community, a United Church pastor that you know, or write the uh, the central office of the United Church and say, uh, this is not the way to go. This is not the way to build um, a good relationship between uh, the Jewish community and. Uh, the uh, the Christian world. Uh, this is actually the opposite, and we call on you, United Church, not to do this. Um, on this, I just want to, before we open up to question, Donna and Adam, I want to thank you so much for inviting me. It really, really is a privilege um, to speak to you, and I hope that we do that again, but in person uh, next year or the, or the year after, so that we can not only have this discussion, but uh, break bread, uh, share coffee, uh, share a drink. Uh, I personally like Diet Coke. Uh, so we can discuss those important issues and how together we can make Canada a better and fairer place. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Richard. Again, uh, I, friends, I believe this is so important uh, for us to hear, uh, for us to, uh, to get on, on recording. Uh, specifically addressing us as uh, Christians, Canadian Christians, um, about what has been happening in, in regards to anti-Semitism in Canada. And, and Richard, again, I just want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for, thank you and all of Sija on behalf of the work that you've been doing, because I think, you know, some of the relationships that we've had with, as ICEJ with Sija through the years um, have, have allowed us to understand what has been going on in the Jewish community here, or like uh, as our neighbors. Um, you know, I saw some comments, um, you know, some people in Montreal that were very aware because it was very evident. Um, actually, one of the young pastors who will have praying at the end, uh, he, he lives in, uh, I believe, Outremont. So he's, he's right in, in the neighborhood and he has Jewish neighbors. Um, and so we'll, we'll have him pray at the end. But, um, you know, not only the UCC, uh, unfortunately, I'd even say the MCC, which is the Mennonite Central Com uh, Committee, also adopted the BDS, um, uh, adopted BDS as part of their beliefs, and and, and that's a very strong uh, and large uh, Christian group on, in, in the central and western provinces. So it is very concerning, friends. And um, so please, if you have any specific questions for Richard, uh, I saw a couple coming up here, so I'm going to ask Richard, but this is a good time. You can post them. Um, the, friends, it, again, we, sh we should also never be sh uh, afraid of, of sh declaring the, the terrible history uh, in, in the so-called church through the ages that was involved in anti-Semitism. And, um, and, and again, we're seeing this pop up. And uh, like Richard said, it, it many times it's in, it masked as anti-Zionism with this BDS movement, and, and it is not, not in any way 
supported in this book that we hold to, right, friends? And, and that's, I know ICJ is very involved in, in bringing education in that way. Um, you know, we, we don't stand in support of Israel for these, for apocalyptic reasons or anything like that's because God made promises, covenants that are unbreakable to this people. And through them, there was this vehicle of worldwide light and redemption that came through. So it, again, it's such a joy uh, to, to be part of that education, like you mentioned, Richard, uh, as the ICJ globally, as we're represented in 90 nations uh, and, and people all over the world are, are hearing the truth of why the Bible tells us to love, support, and stand with in relationship. Uh, with the Jewish people, and and of course, just those those simple rules that they're our, our fellow man, our fellow our fellow human being, uh, that we need to stand against all forms of hate. But this is a very concerning form of hate. So to the questions, I have uh, one question here. Um, I says, thank you, Richard, for being with us and for this frank presentation. I hesitate to ask this question, but as an evangelical Christian, I'm interested to as to whether you have interaction with some significant some. some excuse me, have interaction with some of the leadership within our significant population, which would be, I'm, I'm assuming, the evangelicals, and are you finding any support from that leadership for fighting anti-Semitism? Um, thank you for, uh, for the question, Adam. Uh, so yes, I, I'm in close uh, relationship with the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada uh, on a variety of subjects. Uh, it could go, for example, we work together on the issue of uh, palliative care, uh, which was a, a way to show how important, you know, be, because men being created or human, human beings being created in the image of God and, and how important it was to, uh, for them to have the dignity to the end of their days, uh, to the issue of anti-Semitism. We're very grateful that the uh, Evangelical Fellowship of Canada is a close, uh, is an organization that we, uh, that we work with. Uh, and whenever there was an issue of anti-Semitism, uh, the EFC has always stepped up to the plate and we're grateful and thankful for that. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, another question uh, that we have from Facebook um, asks, uh, have you been personally the recipient, the recipient of anti-Semitism, Richard? Thank you for your input. Thank you. So, so yes, I, I have been. Uh, thank, thank God it was not violent, but I have been uh some uh slurs have been have been uh thrown at me including the regular you know the double uh the canard of uh, double loyalty uh or being more loyal to the jewish people than, than than my own country um we've i've seen uh in uh in a um during a convention of a political party that shall remain nameless for now, uh, an obsession with the state of Israel, so a, a form of anti-Zionism that was truly anti-Semitic, um, to the point that uh, my son, who was there with me, um, who is a 20, now 23, very, he was a hockey player, so well-built and et cetera, et cetera, at some point had to walk to the microphone simply to protect a, a smaller uh, person, a smaller woman, who was afraid because people were yelling at her as she just wanted to, to uh, to address the uh, the room uh, and say and say what she thought. And he just he, and he said, "I've never felt so much hatred in, in a room uh, as I felt there." So, mm. so we have. Wow, wow! Uh, it's it's really shocking and. Uh, even me personally, who just has a, a grandfather who's a Sephardic, if I, I, I've experienced that anti-Semitism as well, um, two separate occasions, and that could be for another, another time. But I have a question here right from uh, Rabbi Bowman for you, Richard. He says, some of the anti-Semitism you described has been violent. Uh, that is a criminal issue. What is being done to, to work with the local police forces to help being proactive in this area? So we're, we're, we're quite lucky uh, to have good relationship with law enforcement. Uh, we have people who are in charge of that at CJA and in different federations across the country. Um, the police has been quite responsive to us and not later than yesterday, we actually had a meeting with the Ottawa Police Services, uh, Police Service about specifically hate crime. Um, so we are very lucky in Canada to, to have that. What, however, we think we need to do 
is for those of you who know it, the, uh, we, we think we need to have more uh, ownership of our security in the community with the help, with the financial help of the government. And we'd like to see a model similar to what the British uh, Jewish community is doing with the um, Community Security Trust uh, applied, to, uh, applied to Canada. That would be a, a nice way to um, not supersede the work that the police is doing, but to complement um, the work that the police is doing. Um, but Adam, before before, because I know people have to have to leave with uh, for for uh, for four, because we you said it was an hour. Even though we spoke about something dark and anti-Semitism and Jew hatred, um, I know that you, uh, Adam, and, and Donna, and people who are, who are involved in uh, in IC uh, EJ. Uh, know that uh, Jews don't define themselves by anti-Semitism. Right. While we are worried about it, uh, there's so much light in our lives that mm. is uh, nourished and brought by our tradition, uh, by our rituals, by our community, by our families. Um, and, and I would not want uh, people to think that oh, our lives are always dark. Uh, I, I could, I was... You know, when I was listening to uh, Rabbi Bowman earlier and, and the, 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 the positivity that, that he emotes when he talks about, about uh, Hanukkah <clears throat> is something that I experience with so many Jews across the country. Uh, when, I, when I do uh, my Friday night Shabbat dinners uh, and we tend to invite a lot of people from different communities uh, to share this. <clears throat> and so many people have said, this is so beautiful. The, the ritual and how you bring people together and you turn everything off and you focus on what's important, your family, your friends, your relationship with God. Uh, the world needs more of that. So, you know, the old slogan, the need, the Canada needs more, uh, the world needs more Canada. I think, I think the world needs more, uh, more of Judaism. Wow. I, I couldn't agree more, uh, Richard. And, uh, you know, we do want to end on this beautiful, positive note. Uh, and, you know, really, friends who, who are watching, I know that the, the audience uh, today and in the replay most likely is predominantly Christian. And, um, uh, you know, I want to address uh, some of our, our, our Christian audiences, as I believe a lot of this is very spiritual, right? Um, you know, we have the promise in, in the Bible uh, that, uh, that Israel is a light unto the nations, uh, it's, it's so clear um, that they, they, they've given us, uh, you know, the, 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 the prophets, they've given us the, the Torah, they've given us uh, the words of life, uh, they've given us Jesus, Jesus was Jewish, and it's amazing how one of the oldest uh, references in all of history uh, to Hanukkah was in the New Testament, right, in, 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 the, uh, in John chapter 10, we see that Jesus was in the temple, celebrating what hanukkah so it's it's amazing uh th this is so important friends and uh, i don't want to take too much time uh, because i have two pastors with us that that we're going to close in prayer it's so so key so important uh that that we do pray because i believe this uh anti-semitism is not just a physical social political issue it is spiritual it is very spiritual and um it, as you know together with our jewish brothers and sisters we realize as well that there's a spiritual aspect to everything and, and prayer is so key. And we want to pray together as Christians, um, pray for our, our friends. And I want to encourage you all, you know, we are really honored uh, in Canada to have, I, I think it's plus 400,000 uh, of, of the Jewish community all across the, the major cities. Uh, you know, there's Christians in the, that are involved in the ICJ in countries like Algeria or, or uh, you know, where there's no Jewish people. And they just, from a, from a distance, we can be a practical loving friendship and support to the Jewish community right here in Canada. Um, so I'm going to, again, with time, I'm going to pass it to uh, Pastor David Reimer, who's joining us from Steinbach, Manitoba. Pastor David, uh, if you can just take a, a moment to pray, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to unmute here. Here we go. You should be able to do that now. All right, there you go. Uh, let me see. C could, do I hear you, Pastor David? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm here now. Can you hear me? Uh, Yes, I can, Pastor David. Pastor David, can you uh, pray for the Jewish community here in Canada and in Israel? And um, any, any in, in a one minute, if there's any comment that you'd like to make. Yeah, 
Uh, you gave me five minutes, actually. So I, well, you could you could take a little bit more. Let's go. We're yeah. just short on time. <laughs> I know you're short of time, but uh, I have something that the Lord put on my heart to share. And so thank you, Rabbi Bowman. Really appreciate your presentation, and you too, Richard, for that information that you shared with us. I'd like to read from the book of Lamentations. And the prophet Jeremiah was going through the dark times similar to what the Jewish people and some of us as Christians also are facing at this present time. And Jeremiah said in Lamentations, he said, this I call to mind, uh, chapter 3, verse 21, and therefore I have hope. For those of us in the Christian community who celebrate Advent, the first candle that was lit this past Sunday was the Advent candle of hope. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah here in a few verses in Lamentations mentions the word hope twice, <laughs> even in spite of all of what he was going through at the present time. Verse 22 says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. We should all say that together. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, we will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. And it is good to wait quietly, or I would like to insert the word patiently, for the salvation of the Lord. Because it's not our governments who are going to bring salvation to us. It's the Lord. So our hope is not in government. Our hope is in the Lord. One more scripture passage quickly from 1 John in the New Testament. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 5, it says, this is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, evangelical Christians together with the Jewish community. And so we say, Shalom and God bless you. We in, in our home, in our church, are celebrating Hanukkah together with you. The festival of lights and the feast of dedication. And so in Lamentations, it tells us also in chapter 3, verse 40, it says that um, we should examine our ways and test them. That talks about dedication and rededication and then return to the Lord. So bringing both Hanukkah as well as uh, both the Feast of Festival of Lights and the Feast of Dedication together in these few comments from Lamentations and also from First John. I'd like to pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of connecting ICEJ together with Operation Life Shield and Rabbi Shmuel Bowman there in Israel. We thank you for this partnership that we have, I ICEJ together with the Jewish community in exposing anti-Semitism and coming alongside of the Jewish people, embracing them, offering them our encouragement, our support, and the comfort that we can provide through our faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Savior and Lord. We thank you, O oh God, that, that together we can demonstrate unity and fellowship one with another. And I want to pray your blessing on uh, Rabbi Shmuel right now and the work that he does. I pray that for protection and safety, even as some of us have come alongside and offered and, and helped to sponsor bomb shelters. We thank you, Lord, that that same covering and protection we can expect from you, which is our heavenly protection. We ask you, Lord, to provide that for them and for the nation of Israel. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. So we choose to bless Israel right now, whether we celebrate Hanukkah together with them or the other feasts uh, of the Lord together with them. The fact of the matter is that Christians are, are called to come alongside and to support and to encourage them and bless them. So we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, especially during this Hanukkah season. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, uh, Pastor David, even for bringing that scriptural insight. That was, that was powerful. Uh, we so appreciate the support you're bringing there in the province of Manitoba. I know there's others. Um, uh, Philippe, Pastor Philippe Bedard who's also our young adult director for the ICJ Canada, the RISE director. I'm going to ask you to pray en français, uh, my brother, 
And uh, uh, s'il vous plaît, uh, uh, priez pour les, les communautés juives ici au Canada, OK? That'd be wonderful. Uh, we just want to pray continued protection over them. And um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Ah, thank you. All right. So I don't know if you guys can hear like the echo because I'm sort of in, in, the, in the chapel of the Presbyterian College here in Montreal. Uh, but anyways, I, I kind of feel like I'm in a, in a cathedral or something. It's kind of funny. So let me just pray and uh, we'll close in prayer in French. Uh, merci, Seigneur, pour, um, merci, Seigneur, pour Richard Marceau, le travail qu'il fait avec uh, CIGA uh, ici au Canada. Uh, je te prie, uh, mon Dieu, que tu puisses lui donner uh, toutes les ressources uh, disponibles pour qu'il puisse bien uh, accomplir la tâche que tu lui as donnée, uh, que tu puisses aussi, Seigneur, lui donner la... Euh, lui donner la faveur avec euh, certaines personnes clés qui peuvent l'aider à avancer la mission de CIGA. Euh, je te prie pour ta bénédiction sur lui, sur sa famille, euh, sur sa communauté, Seigneur. Euh, merci pour, euh, pour Rabbi Shmuel, merci pour euh, sa dévotion, merci pour son amitié avec ICJ. Euh, que ton nom puisse être glorifié, Seigneur, dans tout ce que CIGA fait, dans tout ce que Operation Life, Life Shield fait, par tout ce que ICJ fait. Seigneur, que ton nom soit glorifié et que juifs et chrétiens, Seigneur, on puisse se tenir main dans la main, Seigneur, euh, pour défendre la cause de ceux euh, qui sont opprimés par l'Éternel. Et merci euh, pour la tâche que tu nous donnes et aussi merci pour tout ce que tu fais pour nous. On est béni au-delà de tout ce que les mots peuvent décrire et que ton nom soit glorifié dans nos vies, dans le nom de Jésus. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Thank you, Philippe. Uh, thank you, Pastor Philippe. Thank you, Pastor David. Um, and Donna, I am going to pass it for you just for some final comments. Uh, and uh, excuse me, sorry, Donna, before I do so, I wanted to ask Jude just to give that quick little update, an exciting update um, and uh, of, of what happened in this past day or two. And then Donna, some final comments, and we will close out with uh, a, a special video for those who can stay on. Uh, Jude. Okay, Adam. Um, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's on here. This has been a wonderful webinar. Thank you, Rabbi Shmuel. Thank you, Richard. Um, we had such a wonderful day yesterday. Uh, we had a Giving Tuesday day where we were raising funds for Holocaust survivors. And uh, God was so good to us because we set a goal based on the amount of funding that we'd been given for matching donations. And lo and behold, we managed to make our goal we actually raised $50,000 in the one day. It's never happened before. We are praising God and so thankful. And then we have another wonderful surprise that came. Uh, another donor surprised us with a $25,000 matching fund donation to go towards Operation Life Shield. And so from December the 1st today to the 15th, all donations will be matched up to that $25,000. So. This is so exciting because our board meeting is on the, the 15th, uh, Rabbi Shmuel. So God willing, there will be another one or two shelters coming your way. So God is good. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Baruch Hashem. Wonderful. Uh, Donna, final comments as we close here. Yes, and uh, Christine Williams uh, couldn't join us. She's on the road, and um, she's our um, public affairs and, and media consultant. I think you might know her, um, both of you, Christine Douglas Williams. Um, so she just said here, this is a very big problem, the anti-Semitism, and the UN just finished holding a solidarity event with Palestinians on the anniversary of recognizing Israeli statehood. Israeli ambassador to UN was rightly very upset. And we have seen also the anti-Semitism in, in places of universities, colleges, where there's been scholarly dignitaries speaking, which were hijacked by those who are anti-Semitic, anti anti-Israel. It's the same thing. Michael Oren, for instance, he, he was disrupted and many others. 
getting back to the United Church, I went to one of those town hall meetings before they went back to readdress their three years. It's, it's a it's a conference they have every three years. And what did they do? They uh, boycotted Soda Stream in Mala Adomim, just in uh, outside of Jerusalem. So what we did under a grant with the Israel government tourist office, we went and I specifically asked to go to Beersheba, where Soda Stream had relocated. Now, and I asked to speak to anyone who had good English, uh, that the supervisor who would be, and he was an Arab Muslim. And I said, would you like to speak to our Canadian audience about what really happens here at Soda Stream? Because the United Church, I didn't bring that up about the United Church, but I wanted to get on our air, on our, to our viewers, <clears throat> excuse me, how... How great was the work in Mala Adamim? Um, so, but they had moved, they, they amalgamated their whole production in Beersheba. <clears throat> it was a huge operation. I don't know if you've seen it there, um, Richard. <clears throat> and, and basically the fellow said, life is good. They get meals, there's uh, for the Muslims. So we went on the floor and as they were assembling these soda stream units, um, you saw every kind of ethnicity, every kind of what could be a faith group, uh, Muslims, Israelis, <clears throat> perhaps even Christians, <clears throat> excuse me, getting along really, really well. And they, they're well fed. There, there are prayer rooms for the Muslims so that they can um, have use of that. So they take care of everyone. They were even busing in the Bedouins uh, back and forth. So who missed out on all of this? were the people in Mala at Amim, who were the Muslim Arabs, they're Palestinian Arabs, they're still Arabs, but they were there without work. While a few of them were willing to drive the distance to Beersheba and keep their jobs as supervisors. Life is good. One of them finally was able to afford a car. Uh, he's got five kids. So we got that on, on air. So we wanted to spell what the United Church clearly we're, we're helping um, um, Arab Muslims, uh, Palestinian Arabs, not to be employed. So, but anyhow, I'd like to end this because we've had some beautiful prayers here. The, the wonderful news is that we have been partnered with Yad Vashem since 2006 for the Christian friends of Yad Vashem. And what does that mean? It means that we are bringing the message of the Holocaust. We're bringing the message of anti-Semitism, the roots of all of that, the roots of Christian anti-Semitism to um, our members and for anyone who will listen. And there is training at Yad Vashem for the week uh, where you go there, you don't pay for anything while you're there. You only pay for a flight if you are a pastor or leader. Uh, who has qualified um, to go. And we meet Holocaust survivors. We look at the, the poetry, the artwork, all of the, that history that, that's amalgamated and is treasured at Yad Vashem so that we have a better understanding to go back to our, our community, to go back to our churches and to teach on this. And that's what we do here in Canada. We, we also have uh, churches who host Holocaust survivors uh, during November, especially when we partner with um, the Holocaust centers here. Anyhow, I thank you both. I, I, I enjoy your friendship. And, uh, and we just, um, we're gonna do this together, huh? We're gonna bring the light together to those who need to see the light. So I wanna thank you. Everyone who's joined us today and our special guest, Richard Marceau and Rabbi Shmuel Bowman. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Richard and Rabbi Bowman. And uh, as we close out, friends, we will be having more webinars coming into the new year. And so please stay tuned. Follow us on social media. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter now, ICJ Canada, as well as our young adult wing, which is Arise Canada. Um, again, to our special guests, late as the Hanukkah candles are waning in uh, in Efrat, Israel, and <laughs> as we're prepping, uh, me and uh, me and Richard to light our candles here with our families. 
Uh, we send love to you, Haksa Mea, to everyone. And uh, and I'm going to close, at, and you're, you're free to sign off. I'll be closing with a, a video to give a little bit of a, of a recap of the work of the ICJ this last year, 2021. Can you believe it already? Uh, the year's coming to an end here in the land of Israel and around the world. All right, here we go. Two thousand twenty one was an amazing year for the International Christian Embassy right here in Jerusalem. Thanks to the help from you and many other Christians from around the world, we could impact the nation of Israel, the very city of Jerusalem, in an even greater way than last year. Please have a look to what the Lord did through us in two thousand twenty one. 2021 has been a great year in ICEJ aid. At the Haifa home, we've been able to upgrade the shared living space and physiotherapy room. We've also installed an elevator in the new building and we're just about to begin taking in new residents. Also, we've expanded our outreach to survivors outside the home through a call center. Already, that call center receives 2,800 calls a month. Another milestone in 2021 was when we delivered our 150th shelter to protect vulnerable communities. 42 of those were ordered just this year, and that number continues to climb. We're also really excited that we were able to help strengthen many more families through food packages, home repairs, vocational training, or scholarships that help them towards a brighter future. I want to thank you for helping us make 2021 an amazing year. This year, ICEJ helped more than 3,000 immigrants return to their biblical homeland. We've reached the total of over 163,000 during the history of ICEJ. And while many people are shutting down because of COVID, we've had two amazing years of a virtual Feast of Tabernacles. This last Feast of Tabernacles, we had almost 5,000 participants from over 100 nations. While the world's shutting down because of COVID, God has given ICEJ the grace to flourish and do more and be more. So let's celebrate together an amazing 2021. In our international work over the last year, we experienced a paradox because normally we would travel a lot, but we couldn't do that because of the lockdowns and the travel restrictions. And yet we have seen a great improvement of communication, both in quality and quantity. In these online meetings, we were able to have good communication with uh, many offices which we have around the world, and some new people joined us. So we were able to start new offices in several countries of Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Africa. Many other people joined us for our numerous prayer initiatives, uh, starting with the weekly global prayer gatherings and also these amazing prayer chains at the beginning of each Hebrew month, the Rosh Chodesh. The Lord has used this crisis to raise awareness about His plan for Israel and for the nations. And we are so grateful that we can be part of that. Another important moment for our ministry came in May when Israel faced its fourth rocket war with Hamas in Gaza in the past 12 years. There were hundreds of rockets flying every day into Israel where the security threat is growing. So it's more than 150 bomb shelters that we're now helping Israel protect itself. We were also giving firefighting equipment and uh, fire protection suits to the first responders to help them protect their communities. So the Christian embassy is doing all these things to help Israel keep safe. We had a great impact this year in Israel and together we can do so much more in the future. We are so grateful for your support, for your generous donations to the ICJ that has made it possible for us to increase our work at the ICJ, our Alia work, our Holocaust survivor work, bomb shelters, and educating the church, connecting you to Israel, informing you what is happening right here in Israel, but also from a biblical perspective. So thank you once again for your great support. 
we are very thankful for that and may God do great things for you also. So you have seen what we have been doing in 2021 here in Israel and also right here in the city of Jerusalem. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support, for standing with us in prayer, in your finances, and also in your support in your country. And I want to wish you the blessing of the Lord as you are standing with Israel and as you are blessing God's chosen people. I do ask you to prayerfully consider also to stand in 2022 on the side of the International Christian Embassy, your embassy right here in the land of Israel. All right, everyone. God bless you. Happy Hanukkah. Have Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll be in touch again soon.